So, let's start. Quale uso? Siamo a questo, eh? So, so now the second hour of, of our lecture will be focused on on R measure and somehow and a modular function and blah blah blah. So so remember that last time so last time we we saw that if we take the positive real line with the product then we can define the following positive can define the positive linear functional given by f and c0 0, zero or whatever given by mf the integral over positive real line f s s yes and we saw last time we saw that M defines defines R measure left R measure but it's the same since, since it's unimodular uh, R measure um, right so in particular, I told you that you can see in a not so smart way a positive real line no. in, the, in our star, which can be identified with GL1L. GL so use this 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 to argue uh, our measure on yeah that was the content of exercise 4.1 <clears throat> so I'm going to ask excluding those ones that are already aware about the answer <clears throat> um, an idea to, to do things how can we can so here it's sort of feeling somehow you can see that so, how is it fun? S, if, so I'm going to write something stupid, but maybe it's useful for you in order to understand the point. <coughs> so, S is in GL 1R, then determinant of S is S. Not so <laughs> not so smart say this, this this stuff. In particular the modulus of the determinant it's still equal to S is S is positive. Not so smart to say this stuff. So somehow here what we are what we can see is that in here we have the back measure on, on the real line with a width given by the determinant. So, but the width is the determinant to the power one because we have 
GL1 R. So the idea, the idea to let's say argue the R measure on what? GLNR is the way to consider first the back measure on let's say this this object actually restricted to GLN then and then introduce uh, introduce a suitable way in terms of the determinant actually the modulus. That, that, that's the philosophy, let's say, behind behind the construction of the R measure on GLNR. <clears throat> so maybe I can erase this part. So GLNR lies inside and then R. <coughs> so in particular we already know that this can be identified with R to the n squared and let's say with coordinates given by the entries X, I, J. I mean that to be precise, let's say for two by two, we are somehow listing. In this way, the matrix and then and then. Back. So now we can consider, I'm going to the note, the note by, let's say this way, d lambda x, where x is an element in here, the back measure given by dxij. So as you can write, like in R3, for instance, is in R4, you write dx11, dx12, dx21, dx22. Okay? That's the, my, my, the meaning of this, this way to write stuff. <coughs> now, what I'm claiming is that is that what? <clears throat> is that we need to somehow introduce a wave in order to to get the right the right left R measure. And then and then to check that it's an R measure and then to check that actually gel and R is unimodular, so right and left are the same. And the idea is the following uh, set d mean g x by definition d lambda x over so 
So what's the uh, meaning of such formula? So I'm saying that I'm saying that G is absolutely continuous <coughs> with respect to lambda and the radon non so come si scrive nicodem no forse di qua derivative of mg is 1 over what? if it's not this, this strange statement is not clear you can equivalently say that you are taking a measure the back measure and you are multiplying with a positive function and you know that you, are, you still got a measure in particular notice that if you integrate a continuous function with compact support against this, me this measure you, you get still a well-defined integral because they are compact and con they are continuous and they have compact support so how to check So claim measure no the measure on G is a uh, left let's say left now we see that it's not important left R measure on G and R I'm going to call it G just to shorten the formula so how I'm supposed to check this how can I check this what do you have to do so what's an R measure? <coughs> so what, what you need to check so how to check that mg is a R measure actually left this time it's important we have to do so the definition of left arm measure is the following so recall that for every for every little g in g and r we had the left translation lg from g to itself and given by this okay and by yourself check as an exercise that the determinant so in particular what you know is that so G is an invertible matrix but LG is a, an invertible homeomorphism of, of G and actually this can be extended to I mean we are here right so this is defined over vector spaces so it's 
still a, a linear uh, transformation between vector spaces, which is invertible, in particular it makes sense to speak about the determinant. So it, we have the well-defined notion of determinant of Lg, and please check that is given by the determinant of G. My exercise. Okay? Now you are basically done. <clears throat> because because of why? Now let's say take any Take any G in G and take F in C zero zero G. So these are let me recall you continuous with compact support. In order to check that Moon G is a left arm measure, what we are supposed to do is that, so we need to show, show that Right? Equivalently, we know that we can define using MoG, we can define a linear functional. In this way, integral over g, f, uh, you know, x, g, and we know by last lecture that this condition is equivalent to say that the linear functional is g invariant by risk representation theorem. So equivalently. We can check, we can check that come on, come on, L star. L star G of M is equal to M for every G in G, where this is induced action. G on the dual space. Okay. But let's try to shorten the computation. So L star G M. F, this is what, let's see, mm. M, L, G, minus 1, F, and this is what? K infinito. G, Okay. Now, 
А вот. Now, if we go here, take the integral over g, have g x e u. We can write down the lambda x or the determinant of x to the n. And now the trick, the trick is write down this I mean this is one so you can you can write it okay now you look at what <clears throat> so we are quite lucky because Someone called Binet tells us that the product of the determinant is the determinant of the product. So we can take that gx modulus. And this is here. This is what? The determinant of Lg in absolute value in the lambda x. By what we said before. Okay? Now, now you're done because because if you put if you write y as gx then here you have f of y here you have that of y, the n, and here is how the Lebesgue measure changes for homeomorphisms. Change of the Lebesgue measure for Okay? You have a diffeomorphism, what you have, you, you, you take out the modulus of the determinant of the diffeomorphism, which is exactly Lg for us. So what you get is that you have Fy and that Y n the lambda y. So somehow, somehow the fact that, I mean the right trick is, is given by the fact that you need to weight the, the determinant using the n because here, the determinant of the left translation is equal to the nth power of the determinant of g. That's the main reason for, for this to happen. And, and here, this is the change of variables for the leg measure, and here it's change of variable, and, and you're done. So if it's your first time that you are saying this stuff, maybe you are quite afraid or frightened by this kind of computation, but I mean either you convince yourself using two by two matrices, I mean you, you sit there, you start computing stuff with with, with small dimensions in order to, to get what's happening, or I mean you let's say theoretically try to understand each step in the proof in, in the computation. It's not so so unbearable to to understand it, and so 
So that's the starting point for our measure. And then the rest of the exercise asks you to show that is also right invariant. And the last part, which is maybe the most important one. So if you take if you take n equal two, and so what you have is that by the exercise GL two R is unimodular. Or the modular function is identically equal to one by our definition. But then you can define inside G the following group, subgroup. In there. And what you can check by, by yourself as an exercise that this group is not unimodular. So in particular, closed subgroups or unimodular group are not necessarily unimodular. And That's why I wrote A and A minus one. Because otherwise I need to write a, B, and C, and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> SL2R. And <coughs> so SL2R, it's unimodular. Please check by yourself. But P is not. So in particular, what you have is that closed subgroups of, of unimodular group are not necessarily unimodular. It, this is crucial because, so we are going to see later. Next lecture we are going to see that our friend the projective real line can be realized as SL2R over P in some sense. I'm going to explain how. And the fact the fact that P is not unimodular implies that there are, there are no SL2R invariant measure on the projective line. So somehow the modular function is telling you also dynamical information about, about your spaces. We are going to, so, just to, not to frighten you, we are going to define the projective real line, the projective space, why this is real, and so just a sketch of what, what you are going to see in the next lectures. And, but, this is somehow a reason to, to be interested in modular functions because the fact that they determine the existence of invariant measure on quotients somehow. And okay, one one can ask what happens if I substitute the word invariant with invariant measure class. And in that case it's true. But we, we are going to discuss later this stuff. And also somehow we are going to state again a sort of Fubini Tonelli theorem for, for for groups. And and we are going to interpret this Fubini Tonelli theorem in terms of, in this case, 
uh, Grange made orthogonalization process for, for basis. So somehow the content, the basic content that you had in analysis one and geometry one, like the Grange meet process for, for orthogonal basis and, and the Fubito and theorem for integration can be empowered and strengthened to result for locally compact groups. Direi carino come cosa. Quite cool. And just to conclude, let me say a few words on the other exercise about modular function and, and then we can go outside geology at first at least. <coughs> So I suppose there are questions about this stuff, but maybe confused. So let me ask, is there any question maybe not related with this last part with, that we are going to treat carefully starting from the next, next week, but let me say at least on, on the idea of the R measure for G for GLNR. I kill you. Okay. It happens. <clears throat> Question, doubts, regrets? No. <clears throat> so the last part is uh, about exercise three, which is somehow a more careful study of modular function for uh, topological groups, locally, locally compact out of topological groups, in particular, I'm saying that so the content of the exercise is like find, show essentially a continuity uh, for the modular function which is actually homomorphism and finally try to express how the integral with respect to the R measure changes if you invert uh, an element. And what you have in order to show this stuff is the following the following so exercise 3 point 1 is to show that uh, for any for any f in c from g to locally compact Hausdorff group what you have is that for any f in here and for any and for any epsilon strictly positive, what you have is that there exists v a neighborhood of the neutral element in G such that and this is strange fxy minus fx is bounded by epsilon for every y in v and every X in G. So somehow this is a strange continuity property which is given by the algebraic property of the group, somehow. Because you are saying that if you are not moving too far away from the neutral element then the distances between the function and the function evaluated in the, in this case, in the right translated of the point can be uniformly bound. So it's a sort of a uniform condition of continuity with respect to left transla right translation. And clearly you can find something analogous for the left translation. So somehow, 
what I'm trying to say is that continuous function with compact support is is on on topological groups are much more regular than one can expect because there is some interplay between the multiplication in the group and the continuity of the function. That, that's the content of the statement. And how to show this? Any question? Hey, no. Any idea? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a counter mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is open. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, the entity belongs to it. I mean, you, you are yeah. trying to somehow use the same trick, let's say the, the, the philosophy, as a, the general idea for topological groups that exp try to exploit the continuity property of the multiplication and blah, blah, blah. But somehow, in this way, you are forgetting an important point in here, which is given by the fact the function has compact support. Yeah. And I like to think that uh, I'm doing this uh, depends strictly on each for example. Sure. It's not Sure. But, uh, <coughs> those are open, and mm -hmm. I can use the compactness mm -hmm. to take an accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somehow you want to find. So I mean, yes, I mean. Let, let, let's say, let's say this way, in a more, in a more appropriate way to. Let's say, let's try to reverse the order. So take. We consider first the yeah. support. For every fixed epsilon, I take the count remains on the, the exit of uh, the interval minus epsilon of the mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is an open set. Mm -hmm. say, say it again. For every I fix epsilon, mm -hmm. then I fix epsilon. Mm -hmm. Then I take the calculus. So you have like Fy given by, which is a parameterized function given by F composed with right translation. Yeah, then I, I take the counter base of the of the open set in a minus epsilon epsilon of uh, f x uh, f, f uh, x y minus f x. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this, mm. uh, let me vary epsilon. I get uh, a correlator of the group. Mm -hmm. But you want. Oh, okay. I mean, you you are not in, you are not uh, exploiting the support. Sorry. I mean, you are taking something really huge somehow. Which, which covers everything. I mean, I, what I'm trying to say is that you can take something more localized around the support. Yes, I mean, the point is that somehow you want to localize around the support of your function. So the idea is somehow correct. That means take k, let k be the support of the function and the support of the function is the closed set where it's the closure of the set where the function does not vanish. Does not vanish. And what you can take for any x for any x in K by continuity there exists Vx, an open neighborhood of the neutral element such that and let's say that it's less than epsilon over 2. <coughs> and this holds for what? For every 
y. Here we go. Now, as somehow you were saying, you have what? So you are. This is your support. And what you are doing is you can consider first notice that by exercise two we can suppose first that Vx is equal to Vx minus 1 and then that Vx times Vx lies inside Vx just to simplify our life and then take <coughs> we take Golf u, frac u or whatever, frac u, uh, which is given by what? x times vx as x lies inside your compact support. Okay. So somehow what you are what you have is that here you have your neutral element and you are taking like Various vx1, vx2, vx3, blah blah blah, which are all open neighborhood around the neutral element. And what you have to do is you can move this object here using the element x and has the, the group law. And here, okay. okay. And in this way, we have an open cover covering of the. That's the trick. <clears throat> and then you can use compactness in order to restrict to a finite subcover of you and then there is some trick to do in order to conclude the exercise in order to get what you want but somehow you need to extract a finite subcover of your support and then something that if you look at the exercise for a sufficient amount of time <coughs> So I won't do the, the full uh, solution, I won't give you the full solution of the exercise and because it's not important and also because somehow you would be able to find also on Google or somewhere if you want, I mean, if you're not able to do it, we can discuss, but if you do, do not want to discuss, you can search on Google and then there is a solution for this. So if there are no questions, see you next week on Thursday. Hmm? Ardela. You will receive an email with all the information. Thank you.